and we're back at PAX Unplugged 2019, and I'm here with... Christopher Batarlis from Everything Epic. So recently you, you uh, won a Kickstarter, or you succeeded in a Kickstarter for um, the new Vampire the Masquerade board game. That's right. Um, where did the idea for that come about? Vampire the Masquerade Blood Feud is a mega board game. It's actually the first of its kind. It's for 4 to 32 players. Yeah, it's one of the biggest board games of all time. Basically, you go on a team of up to four other players, and you'll be fighting and competing against all the other teams to take over New York City. That, of course, in the Vampire the Masquerade universe. So it's all about the strategic, epic board game experience. It's not just a board game, but it's also a role-playing game and a mega game all in one. It's a mega board game, the world's first game of that kind. Can you share with us a little bit about the like game mechanics? Like, How, how do you combine role-playing with board gaming? Certainly. Yeah, you're going to be playing a character on these teams, and basically what you're doing is, as a team member, you're going to choose one station. It could either be the marketplace, it could be the cityscape, the edict board, or you could be on the council. When you're on one of these stations, you will be trying to do whatever the specific mini game goal, so to speak, that's there at that station. So for instance, if you're in the marketplace, you're going to be buying and trading and selling from each other there to try to upgrade and make your team more powerful. If you're at the cityscape, you're doing an area control game. You're going to be fighting different enemies and kind of contending for specific locations on the board at that time. If you're in the council, you're doing kind of political negotiations, a little social deduction type of an aspect. All of these come together in a round-based game because the game is in real time. So each round is actually timed by a storyteller. And then that storyteller in between rounds is going to resolve the round to see what's happening. By the end of all of the rounds, at the end of about two hours, because the game only takes about two hours to play, all of the players will then tally up their points that they have on their ambition cards, and whichever team has the most wins the game. For anyone that maybe missed the Kickstarter, sure. uh, is there still a chance to get the game? Yes, indeed. You can go on our website, and you can actually do a late pledge, a late backing at everythingepic.us. If you go through there, we're on gamefound.com. It's our pledge manager for the Kickstarter. You basically can find a link through Everything Epic. You can go to the Kickstarter page and go to GameFound, where our entire late pledge system is there, and you can actually pick up a late pledge of the game right now. Before we wrap up, I know you're just not just promoting that. You're also here for Grand House. You have Metal Dawn I see right here. Um, anything you want to plug real fast? Well, we have some really great, awesome games coming up. We have one of the biggest narrative choose run adventure or RPG board games ever called Secrets of the Lost Station. It has 92 fully narrative written choose your own adventure scenario games in that same game. So it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of words, an epic board game sci-fi experience that's Secrets of the Lost Station. We also have a game called Grindhouse coming out, which um, is actually here today. Grindhouse is about winning $10 million if you could survive the night in the Grindhouse, but it might cost you an arm and a leg. And that is a quick, fast-paced narrative game for uh, two to six players where you're traveling through five rooms in this crazy grindhouse to try to, of course, survive. Whoever has the most limbs at the end could be the winner. So we have a lot of really cool, interesting games coming out, like Rambo, for instance, which will be out Q1. Vampire stories come and go. Oh, yeah. But Vampire the Masquerade has stayed around in the board game and role-playing community since probably the beginning. Yep. Um, since the 80s, I believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, why do you think that is so? I think that Vampire the Masquerade is probably the world's greatest vampire universe there is. They have created and, and created a community of players who are some of the most interesting and creative and unique individuals out of all the role-playing game individuals in the world. So these masquerade individuals will be there and kind of be within the society of role-playing. So they keep it alive through their love and devotion and passion of Vampire the Masquerade. So I think it's something that is so thematic and just oozes with that theme. It's one of those things that kind of connects to everyone because anyone, conceivably speaking, could be a vampire. I could be standing right here today. I could be a vampire, for instance. 